This is a short video about how continuous functions behave on intervals. So the first thing I'm going to tell you about is if I've got an interval i that's this closed interval from a to b. And when I say closed, I mean that it contains its endpoints a and b. That's what the brackets denote again. Um, and uh, what else? It's a bounded interval. It's not some infinite interval. Um, and let's say we've got a function whose domain is this interval i. It spits out real numbers. And let's say that this function is continuous on this interval. So it's continuous at every single point inside of this interval i. Then your function has to be bounded on i. So how do you prove such a thing like this? So we're going to do a proof by contradiction. Suppose by way of contradiction that f is unbounded on i. And so what would that mean? What's one way to interpret that? So for each natural number, there should be some point in my interval, I'll call it xn, such that the absolute value of f of xn should be bigger than whatever n is. In other words, for any natural number, I should always be able to find some input so that the output is higher than that natural number. And now the idea is, if I should be able to do that for every natural number, then you see that I've constructed a sequence of points that are in my interval here. We're going to call that sequence, well, xn. And so what do I know? I know that this interval from A to B, that's a bounded interval. And so any subset of that's bounded also. And so in other words, uh, if I think about these points in the sequence, yeah, that forms, this, I can think about that as defining a subset of this interval i. Therefore, my sequence xn is bounded. So I've got a bounded sequence of real numbers by bolzano weierstrass Remember, bounded sequences of real numbers have convergent subsequences. They have to. So there exists a convergent subsequence of the sequence xn, and we'll denote it by x sub nk. And let's say that the limit of x sub nk is this number x. So x will be the limit of this subsequence here. And the next thing I want to tell you is i is this closed interval. And what, it, what does it mean to be closed? That means that um, sequences of i they converge, they have to converge in i. So limits of sequences from i, they can't converge outside of i. They have to converge in i. That's one way to think about closed. And so in particular, okay, x and k is a sequence of points from i, and its limit is x, therefore x has to be in i. So it has to converge to a number that's in i. But what else do I know? f's continuous on i, and I had that sequential criterion for continuity which told me that if the limit of x and k is equal to x, then the limit of the outputs, f of x and k, has to be equal to f of x. Remember, that is a characterization of what it means to, be a to have a continuous function, to say that f is continuous. And so uh, what have I got then? Well, this says that the limit of the outputs, f of x and k, so really I'm just looking at this side, it's a, that, that's a convergent sequence, right? The, this sequence, f of x and k, is convergent. And what do we know about convergent sequences? Well, they have to be bounded. So convergent sequences are bounded. Therefore, this sequence of outputs is bounded. But what does that mean? That, or what does that contradict? So, so before I jump maybe to that, maybe can I undo? That'd be cool. Yeah, I can. Great. So before I jump to that, this sequence, I found a subsequence that converges, therefore this subsequence is bounded, right? And so what did I assume though? I assumed that this subsequence, maybe, uh, yeah, f of x and k, that's just sum of these. And I built this sequence, right? So that, you know, f of the input xn is always larger than n. So in particular, right, f of x and k should be larger than the number nk. And so these things should still be getting taller and taller and taller but I've assumed that it's bounded, and that's the contradiction. And so in symbols, that idea is here. f of x and k should be bigger than nk, and I know that nk is always larger than k for every natural number, so that contradicts that uh, this sequence is bounded here. So that is our contradiction. So therefore, f, f itself, has to be bounded. So this assumption that f was unbounded on this interval led to this contradiction down here that we've got a convergent subsequence that is unbounded. All right, so to give you some examples about what that theorem is trying to say to you, if you've got this nice closed interval from 0 to 1, and my function is just f of x equals x squared, I'll draw you a picture here. My point is, here's the picture of f of x equals x squared, and I've drawn it to scale in this case, where like I really do want this to be 1, 1, and 1 up here. Uh, my point is that this function is bounded, and so there's lots of bounds. I see it's bounded by 2. Maybe in symbols I'm saying, you know, absolute value of x squared is always less than or equal to 2, 
you know, for all x in 0, 1. There's nothing special about 2. I could have used 3. I could have used pi. doesn't matter. The point is that there's some number here that's always bigger than the absolute value of your function. So let me give you another example. If I look at this function, though, where my domain now, it's not closed, right? I don't get 0 and 1 as the endpoints here. My function is 1 over x. I know that 1 over x, it's continuous on here, right? The only point where this thing's not continuous is at 0, but that's not a part of my domain, so that's okay. So f's continuous all on a. And if I draw you a picture, though, what happens as you get close to, you know, when you plug in 1, we're going to pretend that this is, its output is 1 here. But as your inputs get close to 0, right? this function gets super duper big. It blows up. And that's what I'm trying to say to you here. So in particular, I've got a continuous function that's not bounded. So just be careful with that theorem above. The theorem only applies to closed intervals, and this thing's not closed. So continuous functions need not always be bounded. It really depends on what your domain is as well. Um, what else have I got for you? I've got another result. Let's say you've got some domain, some subset of the real line. If you've got a function from A to R, oh, this is a definition. So we're going to say that f has an absolute maximum on its domain if there exists a point x star in your domain such that the absolute value of f of x star is bigger than f of x uh, for all x and a. And we'll say that uh, x star is an absolute maximum point of that domain a. And I've got, a, I've got a picture for you there just kind of intuitively what should an absolute maximum be. It should be like the tallest point on the graph more or less. So I'm trying to say the absolute maximum point is x star and the absolute maximum um, would be uh, that, that output up there. And I've got a similar definition for an absolute minimum. And we'll say that uh, f has an absolute minimum on a. If there exists some number, we'll call it uh, x lower star uh, in this case. And what should happen? I should have that the uh, absolute value, or I guess I don't want absolute values there. Sorry, that's a typo on my part take away the absolute values on this and on this right so like uh, up here it should literally be the tallest point it should be taller than every other output and then here the absolute minimum should be lower than every other output sorry about that but uh so right so the absolute minimum it should be a point x lower star where the output's lower than every other point uh, every other y value for your function and we'll say that where that happens the actual point x lower star that's in your domain we'll call that the absolute minimum point of the function and so if I got a picture for you, which is over here, again, intuitively, right, it should just be what's the lowest point on your graph, where that happens is the absolute minimum in that case. So what I want to tell you about is for continuous functions, there's this thing that's called the max-min theorem. You might also know it as the extreme value theorem. When you've got, again, a closed interval on the real line from A to B, and it's bounded, and let's say you've got a continuous function on I, so uh, f has both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on that interval. So what's the proof of this look like? Uh, so the range, remember, we'll call that f of i. That's this set, f of x, where x comes from i. This is bounded because f is continuous on i. And what we just proved in the beginning of this video was that continuous functions on a closed interval are bounded. And uh, what else? So if I've got a bounded subset of the real line, I know that it has a supremum and an infimum. So I'll say S upper star is the supremum of the range, and I'll say S lower star is the infimum of the range. And what we're gonna try to show is that there exists some point X upper star in my domain I, the domain of my function I, such that the output of X upper star is just S upper star. And a similar argument, we would try to find an x lower star where the output of x lower star is s lower star. I'm just going to do the upper star one. So I'm just going to show you that a function achieves its absolute maximum if it's continuous on a closed domain. So let's go with that. So we're going to try to show that that happens. So because s upper star is the supremum of the range, that means it's the least upper bound of the range. So in particular, for any n, if I took a little bit away from uh, s upper star, if I subtracted 1 over n, that's not an upper bound anymore. Again, because s upper star is the least upper bound. And so if I could do that for every single n, to say that s upper star minus 1 over n is not an upper bound for the range, there should be points in the range that are bigger than s star minus 1 over n. So for each natural number n, there should exist a point in my domain so that that output is bigger than s star minus 1 over n. But what do I know? 
I know that, well, f of xn is in the range, so that should be smaller than this upper bound s star. So I'm constructing a sequence for you of points from i again, where the outputs of those points always fit between these two. So what else do I know? I'm not claiming that this sequence of points that I'm building, xn converges, but these are points that are in i again, and i is this nice closed interval from a to b that's also bounded. So uh, same logic as before, i is bounded, so that means that this sequence of points xn is also bounded. So we apply a bolzano weierstrass again, which tells me that this sequence xn has a convergent subsequence, I'll call it x of nk. And just for convenience, let's give its limit a name. So let's say that this convergent subsequence xnk, let's say that its limit is x star. And this should be starting to sound familiar for what we started with. Um, since i is a closed interval from a to b, I know that, well, the limit of sequences from i, that limit has to be an i as well. That's because i is closed. So this x star that I have now is an element of i. Further, since f is continuous, I know that uh, f of x, so if, if x and k converges to x star, then the outputs of x and k should converge, or should equal, yeah, should converge to the output of x star. Remember, that's another way to think about continuity. And so in particular, what do I have? Remember I had this inequality uh, up here. I had that uh, that output was always between these two. And I think I should probably have a k here, one over nk. So I have, here's this conversion sequence, right? Or I guess each one of these is between s star minus one over nk and between s star. And what I wanna think about is look at the outsides. Think about the limit as k goes to infinity, right? And so as k goes to infinity, what does this do? Well, this should just go to s star, right? Because these terms are going to zero. And over here, well, that's constant, so its limit is also s star. So by the squeeze theorem, f, x, and k is between two things that converge to s star. And I'm gonna write that down. By the squeeze theorem, f of x star which is the same thing as the limit of the outputs of my subsequence, right? I'm just copying and pasting what I wrote up here. That was from continuity of f. But from this squeeze theorem stuff, that should be the same thing as s star, right? Because this stuff is always between these two things that converge to s star. And what was s star again? s star was the, again, the biggest point in the range, the least upper bound for the range. So therefore, what have I found? I've found a point x star in my domain i such that its output, f of x star, is the biggest thing in the range. And so that would be the absolute maximum. And again, the uh, proof for the absolute minimum is really similar.